What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender modifier tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to use the ocean modifier to simulate bodies of water inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna go through this fairly high level and then if there's anything you have any questions about, feel free to leave them in the comments down below and we can talk about, about them a little bit more. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a plane. So we'll just do shift A, we'll add a mesh, we'll add a plane. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scale this up. So we can set, set our size over here or we can scale it. So in this case, I'm gonna scale it up. I'm gonna make it fairly large. So I'm gonna move my mouse out and looks like we're gonna scale this up to about 100 for right now. And so that's gonna give us a fairly large plane. And so what you want to do is you want to apply your scale when you do this. I'm not going to do that just for a second, just so you can see what happens if you don't. And so first thing we wanna do is we need to subdivide this to provide more detail, right? So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna select it, tab into edit mode, and we're just gonna right click and we're gonna subdivide this face. And we're gonna subdivide this a fair number of times because we wanna add a bunch of detail in here. So for now, let's go ahead and set this at like 50. So I'm gonna subdivide this by 50. So what that's done is that's just given me a surface with a little more uh, detail in here for the modifier to work with. So we'll mess around with that a little bit more in a second. But now we want to apply the ocean modifier to this plane. So we want Blender to start simulating this as if it was an ocean. So we're gonna go to add modifier. We're gonna click on ocean right here. So you can see how what that does is that kind of moves everything around. Um, what it's doing right now though is it's generating geometry. So it's generating ocean surface geometry. Since we want this to just be limited to our plane, we want to click the drop down and we want to click on displace as well. And so you can see how now if I was to click and drag along time, this is gonna move around. But this is what I wanted to show you. Notice how this plane is kind of like flying around and jumping around. We don't really want that. Well, the reason that it's doing that is because we didn't apply our scale, right? So if I set my time back to zero, you can see how this is up in the air. Well, all we wanna do is for our object, we just wanna go up and apply our scale. Otherwise, when we move our time value around, instead of this uh, generating your ocean geometry in place like this, what it's gonna do instead is it's gonna move your geometry all around. So make sure you apply that scale. And so notice how when you move this around, when you change the time modifier, what it's doing is it's adjusting the geometry based on that time. And so right now it's a little bit difficult to see. So let's just go apply a reflective material to this real quick. So we're just gonna go to our shading editor. And all I wanna do in this situation is I just wanna apply like a darker bluish reflective material. So I'm just gonna add a new material and we'll change our base color to something like this right here. We'll bring the darkness value down a little bit and then we're gonna adjust it so that it's reflective. So all we need to do to adjust it so that it's reflective is just turn our roughness value down a little bit. So you can see how now what that's doing is that's reflecting my environment. So this is acting a little bit more like water. So now if we were to go back to our layout view. All right, so now what we wanna do um, is we wanna increase the resolution of our generated surface. So the higher the resolution, the more detail is going to be created. So in this situation, you could adjust this up to something like 15 or maybe like 25. 25 is gonna give you more detail. So you do wanna be careful when you do this because your computer is gonna be simulating more detail based on what we do here. So I'm gonna leave my resolution at 25. And then the other thing is you might notice this is still kind of blocky. You've still got some uh, rectangles in here. Well, the way that we're we're going to make this look a little bit better is we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. So to do that, we're just going to go to add modifier, subdivision surface. And so if you notice, when you do this, this water gets a lot smoother. Um, and then it's going to get even smoother when you render it. So if we were to turn it up in our viewport, you can see how um, the quality of this gets really high, but it's also going to really slow your computer down. So I'm actually going to have the subdivision surface modifier in here, but I'm going to turn it off inside of my viewport, just so that my performance is a little bit better. But just note that when we render that, that'll be in here and you'll get a much better result. And so now, if we were to drag the time function, you can see how your ocean is moving up and down like this. So you can use this to simulate the motion 
of the ocean just by adjusting this time factor. So one other thing that we want to do though is we want to animate this so that our ocean is actually moving, right? And so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use keyframes. And so to use keyframes, what I want to do is jump over into my animation section right here, and I actually want to create a keyframe for the time. So we want to set our time to zero, and we want to come down here, and actually we can just right click on our time and click on the button for insert keyframe. So what that's going to do is that's going to set a keyframe value at the beginning of our animation for a time of zero. And then if I move this over to 250, which is the end of my animation by default, I can set my time value to something like, we'll call it five for right now. And then we're just gonna right click and we're just gonna click on insert keyframe again. And so what that's gonna do is if we animate between them, then your keyframe value is going to change as we move in our animation. So we've basically animated our, our ocean. However, one thing you might notice is this really like slows down and speeds up. Like at the very beginning, it stays slow and then it speeds up after that. And so in order to fix this, um, so that you can get rid of that easing, you just wanna right click in here and or under interpolation mode, you just wanna select the option for linear. That means that this is going to go straight from this value to this value without any kind of easing at the start or the end. So now we have an animated ocean view inside of our uh, image. So if we go back to our layout mode, we can play around with some of the settings in order to get a different view or um, a different result. So you can turn choppiness up to make it choppier. You can turn the scale up to adjust the size of the waves. So notice how when your scale is a little bit higher, your waves get a little bit bigger in here. And so you can use this um, to set, if you've got like a rough ocean or a smooth ocean, you can also use some of these drop downs. And so some of these need a little bit more detail to look good. So for example, if we were to select the established ocean right here, you notice how you're notice how you're getting a lot of points and you don't really want these, but if you were to turn your subdivision surface modifier on in your viewport, maybe turn that up a little bit, you can see how you get a little bit more um, you can see how the level of geometric detail that's in here is going to drive the way that this looks. But obviously this is running a lot slower on my computer. So just be aware when you're doing this. Um, so if I was to create a smaller ocean, this would run a little bit faster because there wouldn't be quite so much geometry in here. But you can use these other functions in here to create other effects. So like for example, the shallow water is gonna give you a different effect as well but we'll go back to the turbulent ocean for right now and i'll hide my subdivision surface modifier at the moment and so notice how in addition if you change your alignment you can change the direction that your waves are going and so let's go ahead and let's render out an image using this ocean so what we want to do is we want to insert a camera. So I'm just going to do a shift A and we'll just add a camera and we'll just put it in place real quick. Make sure that we've got lock camera to view set and we'll just set this right here. That'll get us a decent view of our rendering. And we'll just add an HDRI in here real quick. So, so I'm just going to go into my world settings add an environment texture or an HDRI image. And I'll hide my Bonnie image. And then we'll just go over into our output settings, set our file format to, we'll do FFmpeg video for right now. So then we'll just render our animation. And this is gonna take a little while because it's gonna render every single um, every single keyframe in here. And so we'll just let this work and then we'll come back and take a look at our result. All right, so if we take a look at our result, you can see how we've got an ocean animation that's playing inside of Blender. And actually, I really like the way the waves kind of come together and uh, the way that it kind of simulates the movement of the water. Um, it's actually really cool how accurate this is, but you can adjust this to make it look rougher or smoother, really whatever you want inside of Blender. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you played around with this before? Do you have any tips for working with oceans inside of Blender? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that 
that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.